Well, four administrators of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, met in Jakarta over the weekend as Indonesia kicked off its chairmanship of the association. Indonesia's pre President Joko Widodo emphasized that ASEAN must push to become an epicentrum of global economic growth in line with ASEAN's target to become the fourth largest collective economy in the world by 2030. Assuming the role of chairmanship this year, Indonesia hosted forward ministers of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, in Jakarta. The gathering, known as the ASEAN Foreign Ministers Retreat, concluded on Saturday the 4th of February and covered discussions on many key issues, including a five-point consensus on Myanmar, ASEAN relations with its partners, and the economy, which will be a central part of ASEAN meetings this year. In fact, Indonesia's chairmanship is upholding the theme ASEAN Matters Epicentrum of Growth, the central tenet of which is the strive to make ASEAN the center and engine of global economic growth, especially in the midst of gloomy global forecast. Under the epicentrum of growth pillar, we agreed among others to work toward an outcome that will attain ASEAN region as epicentrum of growth. And then expand COVID-19 response fund into ASEAN Response Fund and develop an ASEAN Blue Economy Framework. The development of the ASEAN's Blue Economy Framework refers to the sustainable management and conservation of oceans, seas, marine and coastal resources as an essential part of economic growth over various sectors, including fishery, aquaculture, renewable energy and tourism. This includes cooperations among ASEAN members on marine and coastal ecosystem protection, combating illegal fishing, and technological research on producing energy from the oceans. Meanwhile, ASEAN members also agreed to establish an ASEAN Response Fund, which is an expansion of the ASEAN COVID-19 Response Fund previously formed in 2020. Although Indonesia's Minister of Foreign Affairs did not specify the objectives and guidelines of the ASEAN Response Fund, Minister Retno Marsudi did clarify that the fund is part of Indonesia's efforts to push ASEAN to become a center of economic growth. Meanwhile, according to the Indonesian government, another key part of making ASEAN a center of economic growth is maintaining peace and stability in the region. One major part of this is ensuring security and stability in the South China Seas. In fact, the ASEAN Foreign Minister's Retreat discussed commitments to finalizing negotiations regarding the Code of Conduct, or COC, on the South China Sea, something that has been challenging due to the different relationships each ASEAN member country has with China. Kalau posisi ASEAN sendiri, itu adalah tidak menyentuh mengenai uh, kepemilikan, tapi menyentuh tentang uh, perairan. Karena mengenai kepemilikan itu adalah uh, dilakukan melalui negosiasi uh, bilateral. Kepemilikan itu kan uh, terjadi overlapping uh, juga di antara anggota ASEAN sendiri. Dan ini adalah harus dilakukan negosiasi melalui uh, jalur bilateral atau jalur lainnya. Uh, tentunya kita mengharapkan kalau esos, uh, esosi, uh, COC itu nanti terwujud, maka itu bersifat uh, implementable efektif uh, sesuai dengan hukum internasional. Dan posisi kita mengenai hukum internasional itu sudah diketahui, termasuk posisi kita uh, mengenai keputusan arbitrase 2016 yang lalu. In 2021, collectively, ASEAN was the fifth largest economy in the world. By ensuring peace and stability in the region and through other initiatives such as the ASEAN Response Fund and ASEAN Blue Economy Framework, the goal is for ASEAN to become the fourth largest economy in the world in seven years' time or by 2030.